Hello, and welcome to Finding Equations of Lines, an Intermediate Algebra Approach. So we have a couple of different ways that we can find the equation of a line, and one of them is using the slope-intercept form. Remember, m is the slope, y is the, uh, excuse me, b is the y-intercept. We could use any two points to calculate the slope, first step. Okay, I'm going to uh, put this in black. All right, so when I do an example down here, it'll be the one in black. Uh, substitute in the slope and a point to find the value of b, write the equation in slope-intercept form, and then check by plugging in the points to make sure they're solutions. So before we get to all of this in the middle, uh, I want to do this first example. So we're going to use any two points to calculate the slope. Here's two points. Let's find our slope. Negative 17 minus 3. Remember, always subtract the y values first. In the same order, subtract the x values. Negative 17 minus 3 is negative 20. 20 minus 4 is 16. Remember, in order to simplify, we would have to factor something out. And so I could cancel these fours. And I'm left with a negative 5 fourths for my slope. All right, always simplify your slope uh, as far as you can um, by reducing, by canceling. Uh, always, you have to be able to factor it out in order to cancel. Uh, wow, I just scrolled past my instructions here. So that's step one. Done. Uh, substitute in the slope and a point to find the value of b. So in our equation, y equals mx plus b. I know the value of m. And I could use either of these two points. Hmm, which one should I? Of course, I'm going to use the 4, 3. The y value is 3. m value is negative 5 fourths. x value is 4 plus b. All right, so I substituted that in. I have to find the value of b. OK. Well, the negative 5 fourths times 4. 4s cancel out. I will have 3 equals negative 5 plus b, which I could take up to this next line. If I add 5 to both sides, I get b equals 8. All right. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. I have my slope. I have my intercept. I can write the equation of my line. And then it, just to check, I could check this other one. Put in 20, negative 17. Let me see. Negative 17 equals negative 5 fourths times 20 plus 8. 20, hmm, 4 goes into 20 five times. And I will have a negative 17 equals negative 25, right? Negative 5 times 5 plus 8. Yep, that's true. We checked our answer, and we know that we are correct, or we've screwed up in several amazing ways that made it all work out. All right, fantastic. So that's one method we could use. But we could also use the point-slope form of the equation of a line, where we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to find the equation. Uh, using this form, we will always simplify down into slope-intercept form. For those of you going on to college algebra, for those of you that eventually have to go on to calculus, this is the one that you'll want to get familiar with now. So let's use blue steps to find the equation of a line using the point-slope formula. Okay, use any two points to calculate the slope. So that first step, finding the slope, is going to be the same every single time. We have to know the slope. So if I do 17 minus 7, I'll then do 8 minus 3 in the denominator. 17 minus 7 is 10. 8 minus 3 is 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Okay, substitute in the slope and a point here. So I will use a 3, 7. So let me write my equation here. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We know that y is y. The first y here is 7, the first point. m value of 2. x minus my x value is 3. So in my next step, the only thing I'm going to do is distribute this 2 through the parentheses. So we'll have y minus 7 equals 2x minus 6. Let's add 7 to both sides. y equals 2x 
plus 1. Hey, look at that. We're finished. Right? I have y by itself, slope-intercept form. Let's make sure this 817 works out. Uh, if y is 17, is x actually 8? Uh, plus sign. Uh, 17 equals 16 plus 1. That is true. So we have substituted, we've simplified, and we even went above and beyond and we checked our answer. So either of these two methods are, are going to get you to the same place each and every time. All right. Now we get to choose which method we use on this one. Uh, I'm going to do the one assuming that you will have more math in the future. So let's use the slope, uh, excuse me, the point slope form. So I have the point 2, negative 3 and the point 5, 9. So my slope, always find the slope first, 9 minus a negative 3 over 5 minus a negative 2. 9 plus 3, right, subtracting a negative, turns into addition in both circumstances. 9 plus 3 is 12, 5 plus 2 is 7, ew. That's right, we'll deal with it. Now, I could use either of these two points. 2 and 3 are definitely smaller numbers, but when they're negative and I'm dealing with subtractions, that's setting myself up for a possibility of failure. So I choose to use this point instead, the point 5, 9. y minus 9 equals 21. That would be wrong, though. Let's call it 12. All right, we all do it a little bit here and there, right? 12 sevenths times x minus 9. 5. Now we'll distribute the 12 sevenths. y minus 9 equals 12 sevenths x minus, remember this 5 is over 1. Anytime you're not sure what's going on to make a fraction, we always put it over 1. To multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So 12 times 5 is 60. 7 times 1 is 7. The only thing I'm going to do now to finish this off is add 9 to both sides so we could have slope-intercept form, but I'm going to do this over here on scratch paper. I have negative 60 sevenths, and I'm going to add 9. Well, here we did not have to have a common denominator because we were multiplying, but here we must have a common denominator, and that common denominator will be 7. So I multiply both the numerator and denominator, of uh, 9 over 1 times 7. I'll have negatives as 60 sevenths plus 63 sevenths. And now that the denominators are the same, I can add the numerators 3 sevenths. So uh, back over here on my left side column, back to my actual work, I have my equation of the line. And I can always check. Uh, to make sure my negative 2, negative 3 is, is on there, but i got to be honest, I'd rather trust us. All right, let's do word problems. Remember, word problems are the reason for math in the first place. It's so we could describe the world around us. So, the number of sports card hobby stores was declining steadily. In 1995, there were 4,500 stores, and in 2005, there were only 1,500 stores. Write an equation for a line. So that's what we're looking for in the end. We want to write an equation for the line that gives the number of sports card hobby stores given the number of years since X. All right, number of years since mm, X, 1995. So let's let x be the number of years since 1995. Okay, now, uh, in 1995, there were 4,500. But in 1995, that's an x value of 0 because 1995 is 0 years after 1995. In 2005, there were 1,500 stores. Well, 2005 is 10 years later. 
there were 1,500 stores. All right, so each piece of information tells us something very specific. The last sentence tells us how to label our variable and what type of answer we're looking for. And then we go back and the first sentence it gives us a hint about what we should find in our slope. The hobby stores are declining steadily. If we want a linear model, we should have a negative slope. Let's find out. 1,500 minus 4,500 all over 10 minus 0. That's a negative 3,000 all over 10. That's a negative 300. So our slope is a negative 300. Now I noticed something, and it would be great if you noticed it too. I'm going to write our answer right here. y equals a negative 300x plus 4,500. And I wrote that in blue because look what we have here. An x value of 0, the y value, that's the y-intercept. That's the b value. So if you recognize it, go straight to it. If you don't recognize it, that's OK because you could always do y minus either of these two points. I'm going to use the one with 0. y minus 4,500 equals a negative 300 times x minus 0. When I distribute that negative 300, I'll have a negative 300x plus 0. Add 4,500 to both sides. Either way you look at it, whether you caught it early or you didn't notice and you did all of the work, you're still going to get the same answer. So it doesn't matter to me how long it took you to get there. Did you understand what you needed to do at each stage, whether it was following the steps of the, writing the equation or recognizing this point is the y-intercept? I already have that information. All right, let's keep going. Let's do another one. A business, produce, a business purchased a production machine in 2005 for $185,000. For tax purposes, the value of the machine in 2011 was $129,500. If the business is using straight line depreciation, write the equation of the line that gives the value of the machine based on the age in years. All right, based on age in years. So let's let x be the age of machine. Yeah, I can't make that E, B, and E, so we're going to leave it. There we go. Age of the machine. So it was purchased in 2005. So I'm going to use my blue here. Uh, in 2005, $185,000. 2005 is new, which tells us that our X value is zero. Some of you might be thinking right now, hey, we have a y-intercept. I, I need to remember that. Uh, for tax purposes, the value in 2011 was 129500 So 2011 minus 2005 tells me that the machine was six years old. So after six years, it was worth 129500 now, I decided to throw this in kind of a small space here, so we're going to use our, our notice method. Always we have to find the slope. Uh, we're looking for a straight line depreciation. We're looking for an equation of the line. We always find slope first. 129,500 minus 185,000, all divided by 6 minus 0. Let's pull up our calculator. 129,500 minus 185,000 will give us a negative 55,500. That's our slope. We now know that the, uh, the value of the machine, let me call it V of X based on the age, negative 55,500 X plus 
185,000 the y-intercept value, the original cost. What this tells us is the machine originally cost $185,000 and it is losing $55,500 per year in value. Right, so they always have uh, applications, these word problems. I mean, they are applications. Last couple of examples here and this video is finished. Let's talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Two different lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal. Literally, they are the exact same value. Two lines are said to be perpendicular if their slopes are opposite reciprocals. That sounds weird, we'll come back to that. That is, if the product of their slopes is negative one. Well, what's this opposite reciprocal thing? If I wanted to solve for m1, what is it? It's negative one over m2. So opposite sign, reciprocal of the function. That is an m2. It looks like a squiggle, a squiggle of some sort. I promise it was m2. All right, so parallel, same, perpendicular, opposite sign, reciprocals. Let's write some more equations of lines. Uh, write the equation of a line that goes through this point and is perpendicular to the line y equals 4x minus 23. Now, the first thing, anytime we want to write the equation of a line, we always have to find slope first. So perpendicular and a line are going to help us out here. We know the given slope is 4. So the perpendicular slope will be opposite in sign, flip over the fraction. So what's the reciprocal of 4? Well, remember that 4 is the same as 4 over 1. So when I flip it over, we have a slope of negative 1 fourth. We now have y minus 8 equals a negative 1 fourth times x minus a negative 12 minus a negative. So if we subtract a negative, we're going to add. Let's distribute this negative 1 fourth. Let's take it over here to the right. y minus 8 equals a negative 1 fourth x negative times a positive is negative one fourth of 12 is three let's add eight to both sides to finish this off and i'll finish it over here where we have y equals a negative one fourth x plus five all right slopes are perpendicular and we've made it so it goes through this particular point notice this negative 23 had nothing to do with it we don't need this negative 23 at all. Oh my goodness, I'm just hitting buttons here. All right, this was not used at all. Okay. Let's try example two. Example two, 811, it goes through the point 811 and is parallel to the line 5x minus 2y equals 30. My first step, I want to find m. So to find m, I'll subtract 5x from both sides. Uh, then I'll divide everything by negative 2. And then I'll look, all right, this is the slope of the given line. Because I want it parallel, I will use that same value, m equals 5 halves. We don't use this negative 15. I don't care about this negative 15 at all. I, I only care about the slope of the given line. Continuing over here on the far right, we'll use y minus 11 equals 5 halves times x minus 8. Let's distribute this 5 halves. y minus 11 equals 5 halves x minus, oh, let's think about this now, 2 goes into 8 four times. So I have five times a negative four, which gives me negative 20. Add 11 to both sides. That's an 11. Y equals five halves X minus nine. And I have the equation of a line that is parallel to five X minus two Y, same slope. And it goes through the point eight, 11. All right, this is the last example. And it uses kind of a combination of the two before. I encourage you to pause Give it a shot on your own. 
and then come back and see how I did it. All right, perpendicular to a given line. So we have to find M. So uh, this is, this is, uh, is going to be a, kind of a, a standard operation. Always find M anytime you're looking for an equation of a line. So we subtract 3x. Let's use that negative sign that that 21 has. More mistakes are made by copying problems down than any other error in all of math, I think. All right, now this is a horrible thing to say, but it's like a bad relationship. You're going to use it and then lose it. That's it. Perpendicular, that tells me I want the opposite sign, so now it's going to be plus. Reciprocal, I'm going to flip the fraction over. So I have y minus 3 equals 7 thirds times x minus a negative 9 minus a negative, that turns into addition y minus 3 equals 7 thirds x 7 thirds times 9 we could do it uh, 3 goes into 9 3 times 3 times 7 is 21 or 7 thirds times 9 remember that 9 is over 1 that'll be a 63 thirds which looks like a horrible number but it's not because 3 goes into 63 21 times. When I add 3 to finish this off, we have y equals 7 thirds x plus 24. We compare the slopes. Slope of the given line is a negative 3 sevenths. Slope of the perpendicular line, positive 7 thirds. Make sure once you find the slope, you use it appropriately, depending on if it's parallel or perpendicular. And that's it for this video. Thanks for listening.